going to be talking about using responsive images. Full disclosure, this talk has nothing to do about JS, by the way. Um, <laughs> sorry to disappoint everybody. Um, it's more of a HTML5 thing. Um, so, when we talk about responsive, right, in our industry, right, responsive is, is a, has been a buzzword for the past five years. It's like everybody who is non-technical also wants a responsive website because, you know, responsive, yeah. <laughs> so, but then, I mean, uh, for me, I work at an agency. So we have to talk to a lot of non-technical clients and, and half of them don't actually know what response is, is except that they want it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the thing is for us who we actually have to build these sites, right? Responsive, to do it well is actually, responsive is very hard, right? So you want to build a responsive website? Yeah, here you go. Here are some, some, some devices for you to test, knock yourself out. So, and we also know that like, the latest iMacs are like 5K, so it's like, Hmm. And then you have people like me who use a Nokia Lumia 620. It's a 3.8 inch screen. So if you want to build a responsive website that looks good from a 5K website down to my shitty phone, uh, it does take a lot of planning. And in my experience, all my clients wanted their websites yesterday. So usually we don't do a lot of planning. So we end up with... <laughs> Our websites have an obesity problem. So this is data from like October of this year, right? So the average page weight is about almost two megabytes. And um, 60, more than 60% come from images. So like most of us, right, what we do is like, we will, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use Gup, I'm gonna use Grunt, I'm gonna write my code in a way that I'm gonna minify it, and gzip it, and when it loads, it's only 3 KB, but at the end of the day, right, it's like you're doing finger curls to lose weight. <laughs> because the, 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 the problem is actually the images. But I feel for a lot of us is that whatever we do with code is behind the scenes. So we can do whatever we want with it. And, and nobody's going to come and challenge us because, go away, you, yeah, I know what I'm doing. But when we, when we, when we deal with images, then we are, we, it's, it's like we have to pass the visual review challenge. Meaning your client will come and look at it, your designer will come and look at it, your, cl your, your client's cat probably has something to say, a janitor, like, oh, wait, why blurry? Ah? Mm -hmm. so, so then usually I, I find that some of us are like, we, we are, nah, okay, the designer gave me a 6K, 6 megabyte image, I'm like, yeah, okay, okay, like, go, 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 go. Don't, 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 don't do anything to it. So, it's actually, it's, it's, it's loose, loose, lah, right? So it's either you have, oh, 5K shiny, oh, you, oh why are yeah, so pixelated? <laughs> Or like me, so you have a tiny phone, and then it's like, whoa, five minutes already can all load. Uh. So it, it, there's, um, so responsive images, right, it, it's, it's a, I think it's a problem that it, a lot of us face, and it's, it's, not, it's not an easy problem to solve. I mean, there, there's been a lot of potential solutions over the years. There's this RUFU, um, actually it stands for Wireless Universal Resource File. Obviously, a nerd came out with it. <laughs> but actually, it's a, it's a device description repository. So it allows you to query and, and like you can detect what, what um, Im device the image is being displayed on. But uh, it's because it, it's not an API, it re requires a lot more effort to actually get it to work properly. So yeah, extra development effort, extra time, which none of us have. There's a adaptive image. It's a PHP plugin. It's a server-side solution, yes, but obviously it's like dependent on PHP. I think a lot of people are rolling eyes now. See me PHP. <laughs> so, um, and, and to get it to work, you also have to actually mess around your server config. So like, if you're using Apache, you have to go and like tweak your HD access. If you're using Nginx, then you have to go and mess with your uh, virtual host config. And so I guess some people also don't want to do that. You know, ah, sysadmin, sysadmin, go and do it. It's not my job. Then there's a, I came across this uh, technique using cookies, but it, it was an experiment. So I, you probably don't want to use it for production sites. And, and someone actually suggested to me this very interesting. It's in the, it's a, you can, um, these sites are available, so you can click the links, right? Here are a very interesting technique to hack the image element. But it's a very hacky way whereby each image is actually replaced using a background, uh, the CSS background property. So obviously, it not, it's not scalable. If you have like a gallery site, it's, it's probably not going to work and it fails validation. So none of these solutions actually work very well. But recently, the HTML 5.1 spec actually has this. We have the source set attribute 
and the picture element and it's a responsive image solution that is native to browsers. So some background, okay, uh, my name is Hui Jing, I'm a self-taught designer and developer. I uh, somehow managed to get a job at a company called Norun, don't know how that happened. And uh, I also write blog posts from time to time. So when I started my website, right, I, I used a normal non-retina screen. Then uh, recently, I decided to upgrade. And then I realized that the images looked terrible. <laughs> so that's why I decided to go and like, okay, let's see what this picture thing is all about. <laughs> so there's a um, few things to introduce about a uh, picture. So the first, source set is actually an attribute. Picture is the element. So the source set attribute, um, it is a, you declare a common separated list of image sources, then the browsers will serve the correct image based on certain conditions that we specify. Mm -hmm. It's actually uh, an image attribute, so it goes inside the image element. And uh, you saw that you don't need the picture element to use. So it's just like inside the image element is one of the attributes you use. So I mentioned descriptors. There are two types of descriptors. There's an X descriptor and a W descriptor. So the X descriptors indicate the pixel density of the image while the W descriptors indicate the width. And when we, I say indicate, it means indicate to the browser. So actually we, are, we want the browser to make the decision and not us. Um, there's also another attribute called the sizes attribute. Um, as, per the, as of the latest update to the spec, right? if you declare a W descriptor, you have to pair it with the sizes. I'll explain why later. So the syntax is, um, as you can see, the first, this, it takes two uh, parameters. So it's like, uh, the first one is the media query, and the second one is a CSS length. Uh, one thing to note is that you can use all CSS lengths except percentages. The only relative uh, length you can use is viewport units. Mm -hmm. So there are a few use cases for picture element and source set. So the first one is for fixed width images. So fixed width images is um, maybe things like your site logo where the size is not going to change, but you want to cater for like retina, non-retina, and then Samsung has like the 0.5 densities, whatever. So actually you can declare it. So like the syntax is just you source set, so you, you, you have to prepare the 2x, uh, 3x, all your x's, and then everything else is as per normal. So if you include the X descriptor, the browser will detect, oh, okay, so you are now on a Retina MacBook. I will serve you the Crest 510 because you, you, I said it's 2X. And if someone using a non-Retina, you will just serve the 1X, the default 1X one. So this, um, so usually the X descriptor is, is for fixed width images. But if we are going for like fluid width image in our responsive design, then we probably want to use the um, W descriptor. So the syntax is a lot longer. So the reason why you have to declare sizes is that this is, a, this is how you inform the browser as, okay, this is what I want my image to, 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 to look like. So for example, my first line is max width 400, 100 viewport units. It just means that um, up to 400 uh, pixels, right? I want the image to take up 100% viewport uh, length. So what the browser will do, okay, you want 400px, 100 viewport, that's about, that's 400px. So on a 1x screen, it will pick the smallest image that is larger than the required width. So in this case, I gave a bunch of uh, sources, so it's 480, 6, 640, and so on. So the, the closest one will be 480. So on a 1x screen, at 400, anything less than 400, it will serve the 480 one. But if I'm on a retina, which is 2x. So now the, um, the max, so it will be 800. So then the browser will pick the 961 because it's the smallest image that is larger than the required width. This probably takes some time to get your head around, but it, it, it's easier if you actually try and play around the code. Um, if, you mess, if you take this, uh, access the slides, you can actually just resize and you can see the image change. <laughs> Um, but one thing is that if, for example, when you loaded the image, it's already the widest one. It means it's a, I already serve you my highest quality one, right? When you go down, it will not, it, it, it will just, because you already downloaded the biggest one anyway, so no point downloading the smaller ones. But if you started from small and you just pull the browser up, you can see the images just like, oh, bigger, 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 bigger. Mm -hmm. 
So something to try. So then next we have the picture element. So this one, actually the picture element is just a wrapper for the image and its sources. So it doesn't work. So if you if you like sort of just not include the image element, there's nothing there because it does it's, it's just a wrapper. It, it doesn't serve anything by itself. So to use the picture element, you must have the source element because the source element uh, allows us to declare a mul multiple sets of image sources. So again, there's like a lot of attributes, but it's basically just a media attribute or a type attribute and then the source set which I mentioned previously. So usually you use the picture element if we call it the art direction use case. It means for uh, at certain screen widths, I, for example, I want to show like a full uh, long, like a, a wider image, like a wide screen image. But as um, if I have a smaller viewport, or maybe it's like I'm using portrait, right? Then I want to crop off the sides. It's actually a completely different image as opposed to my previous example. Actually, we're just showing the same image and different qualities. This one is actually I'm showing a different image altogether. So. One, if your use case is that you want to serve exactly the same image but at different qualities, right? It's suggested that you, you should use the source set attribute instead because then you are allowing the browser to make the decision to serve whichever image. But if you use the picture element, right? You're actually already telling the browser, okay, at this width, I want to serve this image. You don't get to choose because I already told you that any, for example, anything um, smaller than five, seven, 575, I want to show this particular image. So it's sort of like stricter, but sometimes it's like you cannot really predict uh, uh, the person's situation. So unless it's a really an art direction where I, I really want to show a different image altogether, right? It's better to actually just use the source set attribute. Um, oh, then there's also uh, using picture element, right? If you want to use image format. So actually there are a few image formats other than the ones that we are used to, like JPEG, uh, PNG, and GIF, right? There's... um. There's WebP from Google, uh, JP2 is, I uh, can't remember from who, and uh, I think JXR is from Microsoft. So like every big company wants to have their own image format, so don't know why. Um, so you can, you can choose, you can list them all, but for this one, right, the order matters. So for example, this one, right, if um, JXR, uh, the browser, if he, if he understands JXR, he'll just display the JXR one, even though Potentially, he could understand web P, right? You'll just take the first one. So, the order matters. Uh. Um, but at this point in time, none, there's not a single one of these image formats. Even though they actually offer better quality at lower sizes, right? There's not a single one of these formats that's supported by all the browsers. Uh. So, I guess they have, to work them, they have to work this out between themselves. I don't know. But the good thing about the picture element is that uh, regardless, uh, it's, it's like an auto fallback. So, uh, if it doesn't read anything, because you have to include the image element, you just oh, okay, look, just like normal, it just ignores everything and oh, like a normal picture, uh, normal image, sorry. So, can you use source set now? Source set support is um, very depressing on IE, but if you're on Windows 10 uh, and then you're using Edge, then it's, it's a lot better. For picture, it's a lot sadder, um, but Microsoft Edge seems to be uh, moving towards like becoming more compatible with the rest of the world. So I guess that's yeah. So um, but not to worry because there's actually a very very good polyfill out there. If you really want to, you want to use picture element right now, right? This polyfill is already a version three point oh, and it, it covers use cases. It supports IE even before IE nine. So quite steady one this 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 body <laughs> feel. Yeah. Uh, Cause I actually use it for production sites where my client needed IE8, then it still worked because I didn't get any complaints, so I assume it works. So this yeah. <laughs> try and test it, try and test it. So to find out more uh, quite a lot of people this this uh, this this these people are like the the people who are actually working on the spec and stuff. So um, it's a lot more detailed and if you don't understand what I say, then maybe one of these you will just get it. So like, can go and uh, read this. So for later, responsive images they got their own community group. So you can join the group. You can sign up for the newsletter and can follow them on Twitter. Yeah. So uh, that's about it. That's me. Uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Oh, uh, I'm. 
Okay, uh, 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 I, um, I wrote this article yes. on a uh, list of, yes. but actually that's why I'm basing the talk on, um, it was on the previous issue of a list of but so yeah so um it's similar to what I thought about us uh, yeah so if you are interested can like take a read that's me thanks that uh, got questions oh, right. just, yeah I don't think so because you are JS people <laughs> Potentially, you could use something like Grunt to actually generate all the images. But if your designer is really very non-technical, then I guess they could just use the shortcut like command option shift s and like just <laughs> change size and generate all these images. I think or, or some of them, some of the designers I work with, they are actually very, really good at Photoshop and then they were like, oh, um, I will automate this process. They're like, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay, okay, I'll just, yeah, yeah, thank, thank, thank you. So, um, so far, my, uh, there are ways to, I think if you have a designer who's good at Photoshop, you can get them to do it, but I think for people like us, we probably should use something like Grunt that can help, can just uh, generate all the images. I think that would be better. Yeah. Uh, I was actually looking for a solution which you supply the server with only one version, and I mean, only generates, server will generate the lower resolution on demand. Like, first time it queries it, it gives it, it gives it that to you, and then it caches it for forever. I, I think there are probably some PHP options that you can install on your server. But this is more of a client side solution, yeah. Sometimes cost like I guess it depends on how powerful your server is, you also don't want to because you have to real time generate then you might you pop the server. Yeah. CDNs, I think uh could do that by just upload the image to the CDN. Are they CDNs that offer to generate different? Yeah, they could have a cloud and area and look up letters. Oh, okay, okay, that sounds good. Yeah, why not? We must fight the bloat, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Two megabytes. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's terrible. Cool. Okay. Question? Yeah, thanks. 